In Deathloop, knowledge is power. So I, like many others, was incredibly hyped for the imminent release of Arcane Studios' newest game, Deathloop. I, like many others, was looking forward to Arcane Studios' new game, Deathloop. I, like many others, was aware that Arcane Studios had a new game called Deathloop. It looked interesting. A bold and bright aesthetic, novel gameplay, and a curious story. But I have to be honest, I'm a little time loop pooped. I mean, I just finished Returnal and 12 Minutes. And this has sort of been the year of the time loop, from Tenet to Palm Springs to Loki. This is absurd. Eh, maybe not Loki. Different, but not really. But still, lots of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. So I was somewhat okay with potentially skipping Deathloop, at least on its release. But then apparently, it became the greatest game since sliced Pac-Man, and a contender for Game of the Year. So despite my looper exhaustion, I decided to take a look. I'm tired of this, Grandpa! That's too damn bad! And immediately, it looks bold and bright. Okay, you're right, 10 out of 10, Game of the Year, pack it in, fellas, we got a winner. Well, that wasn't such a chore, now, was it? Oh, I should actually play it. Oh, okay. Arcane is really good at making these not quite realistic, but almost stylistic realistic games, and it continues here. The Island of Black Reef, which you only see as four different sections, is creatively adorned with large, colorful set pieces. And as the day progresses, the weather alters the map slightly. These are very capable playgrounds you can explore and learn as much as you can. The main goal of Deathloop is to learn as much as you can about your targets, the visionaries responsible for sustaining the loop, and then killing all of them in one day. You learn things by reading things. And if you don't like reading things, you won't like this game. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. I know some of these words. Look, I think that in-game notes and letters and emails can be an incredibly effective way to world build without being too intrusive in the game. Take Red Dead Redemption 2. You find and receive letters and notes so infrequently that every time you get one, it's worth it to take your time with it. The Last of Us is another example where you find notes and letters that people left behind that tells the story of what happened. But here, everything is an email that should have been a meeting. I hate emails in real life. Why would I want to shuffle through someone else's spam folder in a video game? Oh, you're just too impatient. You need to take your time. Maybe. But half the time, none of the information I'm reading is pertinent to what I'm doing. Some say a waste of time. Others say an incredible waste of time. And I can't even use that information to do whatever I want with it. It just unlocks another story path that I have to follow. It's important to emphasize that I think Deathloop has been misrepresented a little bit. I think that some people have an idea that it's some sort of open world, choose your own adventure, player's choice kind of a game. And that's not really it at all. It's a very linear game with a concrete story path, and it's just up to you to solve a puzzle. I love riddles. Deathloop is a scavenger hunt where you find clues in order to piece together the correct sequence of events. I have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Whoa. I got, I got lucky. The problem is, that's not how it feels when you're playing it. It constantly encourages exploration and experimentation. It sets you loose on the island, giving you a basic understanding of the systems and the loop, and says, good luck. Linear games only really work if you're constantly moving from one place to another. In Deathloop, you're stuck effectively in one place, and the sandbox becomes a prison. And all of that really sucks, but it is fun to play. It's fun to jump in, sneak around, and maybe chop off a few heads. The story, while a little unnecessarily complicated, is light enough that it doesn't really get in the way. And the voice performances are wonderfully funny and well done. The rivalry between the two characters, Colt and Juliana, is great and leads to some wonderful radio banter. Are you there? Juliana, I remembered your name. <laughs> Whatever. It also emphasizes a point I made in my 12 Minutes video, and that is that time loop games really work best when they're comedies. The absurdity of the loop itself lands better when you're making fun of it. 
but I must confess this is not strictly why I've gathered you here today. <gasps> We've all been bamboozled. Deathloop is a perfectly fine game. It's fine. It is not, however, a 10 out of 10 game of the year. Now, I would like to immediately undermine that by stating that I think that using a number system in general to rate different games is kind of stupid. But I digress. We have to ask ourselves, though, Game of the Year? These are just some of the games that are considered the best of the last decade. Many of them won multiple Game of the Year awards, and many have perfect scores from a plethora of institutions. Impressive. Now, I'm not saying that these are the only good games from the last 10 years, of course not. I'm also not saying that all of these games are the best. I'm also also not saying that Deathloop isn't as good as them. Actually, that's exactly what I'm saying. Deathloop isn't as good as them. Did you see that list? The last 10 years of gaming has been insane. Wow. And yes, it is really impossible for a one-to-one -one comparison of each of these games, but Deathloop just isn't there. It is fun, but that's about it. So what the hell is this? Why do so many reviewers seem to love this game, but players actually don't? Is it true that the mainstream games media is corrupt Paid off by Arcane, Bethesda, and Big Daddy Microsoft? Yes. It's the only thing that makes sense. Microsoft, bitter that Deathloop is a PS5 exclusive, wanted to hurt the sales figures on their rival console. But did they encourage bad reviews, thus steering potential buyers away? No. Much more devious. They paid for great reviews so that by the time people got to play it and see that it wasn't as good as they were saying, there would be a mild internet annoyance, thus making everyone kind of pissed off. Which would ultimately lead to... Profit? You've lost your mind. You've lost your goddamn mind, Charlie! That theory does need some work. Here's another one. Deathloop is a novel game. It's neat, and it's pretty well made, from a studio that has a good track record. It has a compelling premise and fun gameplay. Not to mention, the longer you play this game, the more it starts to annoy you. As with most time loop games, you've seen everything before. And I'm willing to bet that most reviewers played it pretty quickly, so they didn't really get to that point. So sure, game of the year, whatever. It helps that it's been a pretty dry year. But actual players of Deathloop may be, rightfully, less forgiving. From their perspective, here you have a game that you're told is one of the best of the year from a prestigious studio with some pretty slick marketing. It just didn't and couldn't live up to those expectations. There are some big flaws in its design and execution, and there are bugs and glitches, including one where I fell through the map and drowned, and in a game where every death counts, that was a little frustrating. Look, I don't have a solution to these review disparities, and maybe there will always be moments when critics and audiences disagree. Once it's in the hands of consumers, then understand a little better what the game is and how it is to play. All I can really say is that you need to diversify your review sources. Wait until games are released, and for the love of God, don't pre-order anything. Hmm. Some actual good advice from a video on the internet. Something has gone terribly wrong. <laughs>